And now I'm going to introduce Phyllis Diller. And I guess the only way to do that is with the words of John Keats. She walks in beauty like the night. If Keats knew that I was using his words to describe Phyllis Diller, he would have impaled himself on his quill. <laughs> but for women throughout the world, she is their leader, Miss Phyllis Diller. Here, I don't know how to take My third book at this very moment is going into its sixth printing. Of course, if I could print better, I wouldn't have to do it over. <laughs> and the name of my book is Passion, Power, Greed, and Fury. It's a cookbook, <laughs> which I have already been requested to rewrite by the food and drug idiots. <laughs> you see, the minute you write a cookbook, they visit your kitchen. <laughs> well, that blew the book. <laughs> My book is full of great household hints. I can tell you what to do with sauerkraut, providing it's December. You silver it and hang it on a tree. It stinks, but it's beautiful. And I'm great in a crisis in the home. For instance, one day our stove broke down. And when I say down, I mean to the basement. I missed it right away. I felt kind of silly standing over a hole in the floor with a spoon in my hand. The broad downstairs wasn't too happy about it either. <laughs> so I heated Fang's dinner in the dryer. <laughs> what a mess! I should never have dried a load with it. <laughs> so I realized with his dinner looking so bad, I would have to greet him at the door looking like Bridget Bardot. <laughs> so I put on a sheet. <laughs> it looks more like Gandhi. <laughs> so I brought him in the house, I put the food in front of him, and right away he starts beefing. He says, what is this stuff on top? You know I hate coconut. I said, eat it, it's lint. <laughs> How did I know he had, he had given up lint for less? <laughs> And then Thanksgiving, I got in a worse mess. Stuffed a turkey. Took me three weeks. Stuffed it through the beak. <laughs> it was the only thing open. <laughs> and I was very patient. I sat there all that time with my eyebrow tweezers. <laughs> well, Thanksgiving goes past. So then I decided to shoot for Christmas. Although I'm going to be terribly busy silvering sauerkraut. <laughs> now I got another problem. This thing is beginning to smell. Oh, I learned the true meaning of the word foul. <laughs> and I cannot put this thing in the refrigerator because that's where I keep my ironing. <laughs> so here's what I did to refrigerate the turkey. I hung the body out the window, shut the window on the neck, left the head inside, and I went on with my work. <laughs> and everything is going great until I get this telephone call. So it's the woman downstairs with a stove on her back. <laughs> I would have dropped it on her anyway. I hate her. Oh, she's so ugly. She had her nose fixed and her mouth won't work. These are 
here for you because you were magnificent, really. Oh, well, thanks. I'm sorry they didn't have your favorite cactus, but that's about it. <laughs> Are they pretty? Huh? Thank you. They're beautiful and they look delicious. <laughs> what are you doing here, anyway? Well, I came to see you, naturally. Ah, uh -huh. you came to plug your book, Five Women I Love. A bestseller? Don't be absurd. This is a shortcut to the golf course? Not even Robert Goulet plays in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You're here to plug your latest movie, Eight on the Lamb. What for? Uh -huh. What for? The critics love it, the public loves it. It's been out over a week and it hasn't been sold to television, it's a hit. Bob, I'm sorry I accused you. Well, you don't think I'd come out here on your debut on the Colgate show to plug a picture? You wouldn't. Of course not. There comes a time in every man's life when he has to put selfish motives behind him. <laughs> You're wonderful. You, you really are. You're the most generous, considerate, unselfish, a fabulous human being in the whole world. Your cake, my dear. Oh, there you are. Thank you. Thank you.